This video was recorded in front of a live virtual audience. Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. We got that dreaded topic to talk about today, the Chanel price increase, the 5 billionth XXX price increase thus far from Chanel. And we are in 2021 as I'm making this video. The next major price increase is hitting November 3rd, 2021. I am filming this video on October 30th, but when I post it, you know it's already going to be a couple of days. And because I'm filming live, what does this mean? First of all, subscribe to my channel here on YouTube. Push that subscription button next to it. Push the join button. Become a member today. Gain access to extra perks. You can also join me on Patreon. Super Deco Ball spelled together on Patreon. Thank you to all my patrons and members who have pledged. Without you, the Fashion Bunker wouldn't be here. But I live stream every Saturday. So I film all my topics on a Saturday. And I have my wonderful co-reviewers and co-chatters in the live chats you are invited to, everybody's invited to join the live streams and the chats and the conversation. And that's when you get your news as soon as possible when you join the live stream, because then you get to see all these topics before they come to YouTube a couple of days or weeks later. All right, you guys. So this price increase is crazy. And I got news for you. You're going to have all your YouTube luxury YouTubers and YouTube channels talk about the price increase. And they're all going to tell you more or less the same stuff. They're going to tell you, oh my gosh, Finally, the double flap Chanel Maxi Timeless Classic is going to cost $10,000 on November 3rd. So yes, uh, the first Chanel bag has reached. The first Chanel bag classic without any embroideries or anything special, just the leather, is going to reach $10,000 plus tax. And they're going to tell you how much the small is going to cost, the medium, the jumbo, and the maxi. How much the Chanel 255 reissue and the regular size large and maxi is going to cost now. We've already had a major price increase last July. That's when already, um, depending on which country of the world you were, you know, the price increase was slightly different according to the country you were in and according to the monetary, um, uh, the... Uh, the, the, the money, the currency that you use in your country, price increases are slightly different. But more or less, you could say we had a major price increase in July in some countries already. Like, for example, the small double flap uh, Timeless Classic went up a thousand euro almost or dollars. So and now it's going up a thousand almost again. So basically, that's a two thousand dollar or two thousand price increase in just one year. And of course, people are going crazy. People are super upset with Chanel. Chanel doesn't care. You would think, you know, this is the same old, same old. The FOMO gets you, the fear of missing out. Then you rush to the boutique because they're clever. We, we, It's like the Twilight Zone. It's like we're repeating ourselves over and over and over again. When every price increase happens, the same videos are made. People say the same things about how terrible it is. The quality isn't good enough, but why do they keep upping their prices? Chanel desperately wants to have the price range of Hermes. Chanel wants this. Chanel wants that. Well, let me tell you what is really happening. And it's not what you might think. Now, where to begin this story? Let's begin with me wanting to hunt down a particular bag since many years. A seasonal bag, if you may. From time to time it comes out, it is produced, and then it's, it goes back into the oblivion and then is reproduced again. It is a classic in terms of it's, been exi it's, it's existed within the Chanel realm for many, many years, but they don't produce it all the time. And that would be the camera bag. Uh, the, I got my camera bag with detachable chains. So um, that's why you see these holes here. But if you want to check out the unboxing of this bag and the review of it, be sure to check out uh, those extra videos that I made on my channel. So I was hunting down this bag for many years. I was lucky enough to get one made in France. Uh, it was produced for two years, 2017 and 2018. The made in France was made in 2018. And interestingly enough, this bag... Uh, at first did not go up in price. So it had its certain price in 2017 and it stayed the same for many, many years. Actually, no, not really. When they, it was remade in 2018, they upped the price a little from one year to the next because it was remade. 
That's fine. Chanel always does that. That doesn't have to necessarily do with price increases. It has to do with a collection price, which is a different story. But since 2018, this bag did not go up in price until about two or three weeks ago. Yeah, I was the sucker who got it after the price increase. And, and you might ask yourself, hold on, Jacob, this is a bag. Isn't the Chanel price increase happening on November 3rd? Yes, it is. So how come this bag went up in price before that? Ha! And here is where our journey begins into the truth behind these Chanel price increases. Let me tell you where it's at. Now, many factors come into this. So follow me. It ain't going to be very easy to follow, perhaps. But you can replay the video again and re-listen to it. But it's kind of mind-blowing what they're doing. Okay. It is true that the main major price increase is happening on November 3rd. Only for the Timeless Classics and the reissues. Maybe the Coco Handle. Irrelevant, though. But they're putting them to a price level now where it's really ridiculous to a point. It already was ridiculous. I already told you I'm done with them. Every, everything that caught every Chanel bag that goes over four thousand dollars. Ten thousand a girl. <laughs> anyway. Now that they've reached the ten thousand dollar level. Really, a lot of people are jumping boat, even people who can afford it. It's just the quality isn't there. It's just not. Chanel has decided not to lower production of the bags. Instead, they just keep upping the price of the bags, which makes absolutely zero sense. I would have preferred them to go on a Hermes journey. And I was talking to my sales associate at Chanel just yesterday when I bought this bag. And I said, why not just do the, 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 the Hermes thing? And then she said, well, no, Jacob, there's a big difference there. Hermes does not produce as much as we do. And I'm like, oh, you're admitting to it. She's like, yes. And I'm like, well, then why the price increase? She's like, honestly, this has nothing to do anymore with what people are saying. Oh, not everybody's supposed to afford Chanel. She's like, it's not about that. Chanel is really in a pickle because... On the resale market, the prices of the bags were going too low because the market is oversaturated with their bags. I'm like, well, then just stop producing so many. No, because they're already in this routine. They don't want to stop that. What they want to do instead is stop uh, resellers from purchasing these bags. Now, this is not the main reason, but this is one of the reasons. And she said, and let me tell you one thing, Jacob. I've been working for Chanel for over 15 years now or over 10 years, forgot what she said, uh, how many years she's already working. And she said, all my historic clients, including you, meaning me, already have their classics. The Chanel clients, the regular returning true clients, not resellers, never even look at the classics anymore, which is true. I never do either, never. I always go for the special pieces. I don't care for that. I really don't. And because we have them. And she said, so for Chanel, it has become obvious that the only people really targeting and interested into the classics are the resellers. And she said, I see it. People who come in to ask for a classic, they're people I've never seen before. They're people I've never worked with before. They're people who are getting the bag with very specific list of demands that you know are getting it to resell it. And Chanel wants that to freaking stop. And it's a sacrifice to be made by upping the bags to a point where, yes, they are also reaching that level of unattainability like an Hermes bag, but they're doing it because they long-term don't want to be that brand that on the second-hand market, I'll get yourself a Chanel bag for $2,000 in a second. Don't get it for $7,000 in the boutique. They don't want the secondhand market to have such low prices. That was a huge issue for them. Second huge issue was a lot of bags get copied. They can't discontinue the Timeless Classic and the 255 because those are their iconic bags. But, so even if those get copied, they can't just discontinue their 
the heritage back. You know, it would be like saying to Hermès, the Birkin is copied too much. Stop making the Birkin and the Kelly all together. You, you just can't. But they did stop manufacturing a lot of other iconic bags that were overly copied. Biggest example, the Grand Shopping Tote. The Grand Shopping Tote was one of the most copied Chanel bags. And Chanel just decided, Chanel was selling them like hotcakes. It's not like they had difficulties selling the Grand Shopping Tote, so that's why they discontinued it. No, the Grand Shopping Tote was selling and then some, but there was just too much of it on the secondhand market and too much of it on the fake market. So they just decided to take the loss, but just like, no, we don't want to damage our reputation. We're just going to stop making the bag. And now it gets a bit more complicated. Now to my question, why the hell did this bag go up in price just a couple of weeks ago instead of going up in price on November 3rd, like all the others? And here interesting answer. My sales associate said, well, Chanel, at one point, when they keep upping the bags of their classics, but the seasonal bags are left alone, most seasonal bags are left alone, it means in terms of being upped in price, there comes a point, or now came a point, this is what, this one didn't get a price increase since 2018. Three years. The bag hasn't been produced since three years. The bag that was in stock was not upped in price for three years. Why now? Why? Why did they not up it all these years and now they upped it? They did because she said at this point, Chanel's prices of the classics are so high that Chanel is embarrassed to have bags, big bags. This is for Chanel standards a big, it's not a huge bag, but you know, it's a substantial bag. They're embarrassed for the price because it's too low. Because could you imagine, this is a full-blown leather bag, you guys. Leather on the inside, leather on the outside. It has those wonderful 255 chains. And it, and, and it before the price increase, it cost less than a, than, a, than a mini, than a rectangular mini, which now the rectangular mini and the square minis have also become timeless classics, by the way, for those of you who didn't know. So... This one cost less than a mini. Less. So now she said to me, you know, all of their bags that are in this range, they cannot make them cost under 3,500 euro. So they have to up them automatically to a little bit higher of a standard just so that it's not that cheap. <laughs> cheap for Chanel standards compared to the classics because people know the quality is just not there in the classics anymore. So that's why all across the board, their seasonal bags that are under a certain level of pricing automatically got upped to that minimum necessary to just still be kind of rep reputable for their standards. But we're not talking about a $1,000 price increase. We're talking just a, to be above that 3,500 euro. So they're embarrassed because of, of course, the image. Like, could you imagine such a wonderful bag costing three times less than its double flap counterpart? People are gonna start asking questions. But not just that, my sales associate could not tell me and here's the shocking thing, when this bag went up in price. Furthermore, I was told, you know, Jacob, at this point, we get price increases almost on a daily basis. And, I'm, and I go, what do you mean? And she says, well, Chanel sneaks in a little price increase here and there. $10, $20, $40. On a weekly basis, for sure but in some cases on a daily basis. Then she made the joke because I was like, but I, just a week ago we ordered it and in the system there was another price. Like, did you guys up the price? So she looks at the sticker of the bag. And she says, nope, this is not our boutique sticker. The boutique that transferred the bag to us already issued that sticker. So she can see what stickers they print in their boutique and which stickers are not theirs. So she's like, so the price increase must have happened before the bag was sent to us. But I can't tell you when because 
I can't even keep track anymore of the price increases we're getting. Then she made a joke and said, hmm, this is funny. Maybe you should just buy it now because by the time we walk to the cash register, maybe the price will be higher even still. Remember the joke that we were making in one of my satirical live streams when we had the FOMO bottle, the fear of missing out bottle, and the price of the bottle kept going up and up and up during the entire live stream? Well, that's exactly where Chanel is at now. That joke we made has become reality. And I'm not even kidding with you. When we did come to the cash register, she did have to double check the price. And I was like, are you freaking kidding me? Now, here's another little tidbit of information for you. Why the prices are going up. And why they're going up so drastically for the classic bags. Yes, we have the resellers. But, and here's another little tidbit of information other YouTubers aren't going to tell you. The amount of clothing and collection, also accessories that they're producing, is drastically being reduced. Now, Chanel doesn't want to show that they're weak and that they have trouble internally, but... So, they're going to keep doing their cruise fashion show, Metier d'art fashion show, spring-summer prêt à poter, fall-winter prêt à poter, spring-summer pre-collection, fall-winter pre-collection, haute couture spring-summer, haute couture fall-winter, coco neige, and Coco Beach. They're still going to keep doing their freaking 10 collections a year. How many months does a year have? 12. Of the 12 months in a year, Chanel is doing 10 collections a year. That's almost one collection every month. That's fast fashion. That's the definition of fast fashion. So they're still showing face in terms of we still have the fashion show. The pre-collections don't have a fashion show, but the pre-collections have a photo shoot done so they have a presentation anyway even though it's not a highly produced fashion show but you catch my drift they're still churning out all of these collections so they're still showing face they're still look look we're doing 10 collections a year even more with some capsule things but the trick is not everything that hits the runway in the past almost everything that hit the runway was produced not anymore drastic reduction of what actually gets produced what you see on the runway will not always be sold. And because the amount, this has to do with the lockdown, with the situation we were going through, but also other factors. The fact that Carl is no longer there, the fact that Virginie, she does some great stuff, but also she does some not so great stuff. A lot of factors influence this evolution of the brand. The brand still has to show off that it's doing fabulously chirpy, but it's not. The amount of stuff arriving to the boutiques is lower. It's not that they're just starting to limit bags. They're starting to limit clothing as well. And this means income is also being cut short to a point where it's no longer, uh, oh, let our classic bags run behind the Hermes, Birkins and Kellys and let's make them cost the same. No, at this point, it's become desperation. They need desperately, well, they want desperately to compensate for the lack, for the losses that they're getting through the other things that they're not selling any much, uh, as much of as they did in the past, meaning clothing and accessories. To compensate for those losses, they're pushing the prices up with those pieces that they think they're going to always sell like crazy, no matter how expensive they get. And hence... This is one of the biggest reasons why the major price increase for their classic bags is coming on November 3rd. It's because they've been losing a lot of hemorrhaging money. Allegedly. Everything in this video is only allegedly. Hemorrhaging money on the clothing side. Now, I still, for the love of me, don't understand why these brands have a stick up their butt and they just won't accept the fact and be honest about it we the customer would not think any less of them if they were honest i think less of them for doing these shady sketchy dealings if they were honest and said hey we're in a pickle the money's just not there anymore yes it's luxury and luxury should never be spoken about in terms of money but 
we're going to start reducing our collections. We don't want to run after the fast fashion industry. We're just going to go back to doing four collections a year instead of doing 10 collections a year because we want to, we value our quality. We want to deliver the quality. There will be less bags produced because we want to produce the best quality bags. You can't produce the best quality bags if you produce 10 collections of bags a year. Why? It's very simple. The highest end hides, the highest end leather quality for European brands in Europe that is available is very limited, you guys, because it's not easy to raise an animal and treat it in a way so that the hides of the skins look perfect when you kill them. Yeah, it sounds terrible, but that's what it is. So that the animals don't fight when they're in the cages, they don't scratch each other. You need to raise an animal, you need to pamper the animal for luxury leather. That animal has to live like a king. It's not supposed to have any scratches, any fight, nothing. So those leathers of that highest premium quality, first of all, the companies that produce those hides are very exclusive. Not everybody can just knock on their door and say, hey, I want to produce a bag, sell me your hides. They're going to be like, who are you? Get away. They only work with the highest end luxury brands, Hermes being the top. Hermes, when they get presented the top end luxury hides, I read in an article a couple of years ago already, they get, you know, shown 20 hides that are already la creme de la creme, the top notch quality. Still, they're going to filter out everything and just leave maybe two or three. That's the level of Hermes, okay? Because that's the high, and that's how little of the highest quality hides there is. Now imagine Chanel doing 10 collections a year, churning out bags like there's no tomorrow. Even if they wanted to do the high end quality, they cannot because there is in not, not enough leather in that high quality being produced every year. It's that freaking simple. So, there's a desperation to want to limit sales of certain bags also because there's just isn't enough leather in that quality. That's another reason for the price increase, not just resellers, not just the fact that they're losing money on the apparel side because they're reducing the amount of apparel produced, but also, also because they do not have access to so much of the highest premium and luxury hides. Why? Because there just aren't enough to go around. Because mind you, Chanel isn't the only luxury house out there working with leather. All of them are standing in line, in row, waiting for that highest end luxury hide to be delivered. From Dior, to Louis, to Hermès, to Chanel, to Gucci, to Balenciaga, you name it, they're all there in line waiting. So you understand now how this system works of the price increase. And, and because they're pumping up the prices so much of those timeless classics, now they're embarrassed at how low these amazing bags cost. And then they slipped in a price increase without even announcing it for these bags before they increased the price of their classic bestsellers. The brooch I was looking to buy last winter that now might come go on sale this winter probably won't in the end because now they're kind of changing their sales strategies as well. I have my archives. I, I take screenshots of the Chanel website. So I have my prices when something comes out because I know they have a tendency of sneaking in price increases just like that. I take a screenshot when the collection hits you know, on my computer, so I have my little archives, so I know how much what costs, I know my product numbers in case I want to look for it in the future. I'm a very, you know, I'm an archive mouse. Um, so, and I saw the other day the brooch, and I'm like, oh, you still have that brooch. And I look at the price, and I'm like, weird, I don't remember this price. So I go back home, check into my archives, looky, looky, eggs and cookie, $20 price increase. They sneaked in $20. <laughs> for a brooch that's like now one and a half yeah one year old no one and a half years old or one year old no one and a half years old um and i tell my sales associate when did this happen she's like i have no clue she's like i have no clue jacob i don't know she was desperate she was like this is becoming insane 
every day. And she's like, and thank God I don't have to do this. We have a certain, we have one person in, in the stock room who does all this. And she's like, and this poor person is also responsible for unboxing the new stuff that arrives, bringing all the new stuff in, checking that everything is fine, archiving it or putting it in the stock room. But this person has no time to do this anymore because this person is busy almost all the time printing out new price stickers, finding out every day when they come to work what has been increased in price so that they can print out the stickers, go into the stock room, find those products, relabel them with the new price tag, change the price in the system, prepare the, the stock that is exposed that is exhibited in the in the showroom i mean on the sales floor you got to also change the stickers and the prices there as well like and she's like i have lost track i used to know how much a chanel bag cost a couple of years ago now i cannot tell you anymore because they keep changing the prices so often that i myself who work here have to look up in the system every freaking time how much a bag costs how much the brooch because yesterday is not the price of today and you best believe it's not going to be the price of tomorrow isn't that fascinating what does this show us this shows us that these price increases are not happening because in full truth allegedly, are not happening because Chanel wants to be exclusive like Hermes. No, you guys, bottom line, they're happening because the brand isn't doing so well. Because the luxury industry ain't doing so well. It can't keep up with its own standards, which it itself created for the luxury world of fashion. They created the rules. They created the standards. But now they cannot fulfill those same standards they set in place. This is a big problem for high-end luxury brands. They are in trouble. This is the end of luxury fashion and the consuming of luxury fashion as we know it. And a new era is beginning. We are at the end of something, you guys. It's completely the end of something. It's come to a point where the facade is falling apart. It is all falling apart. And yes, Chanel has been doing amazingly in the past. They, they are a multi-billion earning company. They have enough money to sustain their flaws. They still have that money. Don't, don't worry about them surviving or not. But... They are struggling to maintain the image in front of us so that we keep believing when we buy Chanel that we are buying something very prestigious. That's why you're going to have the Oompa Loompas on YouTube churning out those videos about Chanel bag is a good investment piece. No, it's not. But Chanel wants you to believe it is because that's all they got. As long as they make you believe that when you buy one of their pieces, it's a good investment piece. Oh, they're good because they know you're going to keep coming back for more no matter how much it costs. The second you stop seeing their pieces as investment pieces, they're, oh, they're, <laughs> you know what this means. <laughs> they're going to get scared. You know when you get scared, you suck up, suck in your butt. <laughs> Chanel, I see you. <laughs> when we wake up and realize these are no investment pieces and we stop being dumb, about purchasing a freaking bag for $10,000 that is not worth even $2,000, then when we wake up, then when we stop spending that money, only then will the price increases stop, and only then will they have to reevaluate how they produce, the quantity in which they produce, and how they decide to minimize the quantity in order to maintain the quality, because, as I said before, the luxury hides of leather goods are super limited. So be honest about it. All of these brands should be. Be honest about it. Acknowledge the fact that you just don't have that quality anymore. In which case, then go down with the price. Or say, you know what? No, we we're, we're really are going to do only 50 bags a year instead of 15,000 bags a year in the Timeless Classic range because we really want to give you guys the best quality. Sorry, there's just not enough luxury quality premium hides to go around to produce 15,000 bags a year. We're just going to produce 100. And yes, you're going to have to have a customer purchase history with us if you want one of these bags because 
we don't have enough for everybody. So we have to make some sort of selection who's going to get what. I'm down for that because that's honest. That's honest. But instead, no, they want to make you believe that the lower end luxury leather is also okay to buy as long as the bag is labeled Chanel. And that's where I say no. No. No way, bitch. You either go and produce those 100 bags or whatever the amount you're allowed to produce with the luxury high-end hides you get, and that's all you sell, and then make it cost 10 grand, but you're going to produce the quality that Moschino produces with, the crappiest leather, and you're going to sell it for 10000 Girl, no. No. Not with me. Ain't, ain't going to happen. It just ain't going to happen. So, wake up, people. Don't let them do this to you. And if you let them do this to you, don't blame anybody but yourself. That's the bottom line. So let me get to the comments. Yes, the crop is out. Connor, good question. Connor Slaney says, have they ever decreased... And the chat is gone. Have they ever uh, decreased the price of their bags? It happened only once. They decreased the price... Okay, so the first major price increase they had in 2015... Their price harmonizing across the lands when everything went up a thousand dollars. That's when the double flap and back then I was like the only one who loved the small double flap. Everybody wanted the jumbo. 2015 was the year of the jumbo. Those that decade back then everybody wanted double flap jumbo 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 because everybody thought the bigger the bag the better the investment because the price difference between the sizes was kind of small so might as well get a bigger bag for your money. Ridiculous choice. And in fact, the jumbos are the ones that are the cheapest on the secondhand market now. Great investment. So you see. So anyway, the smalls went up in price a lot. And they ended up costing almost the same as the mediums. So when Chanel realized that, so I remember... There was a, a round number. It was very simple to remember in Euro. It was the bag went up from 3,200 Euro to 4,200, a thousand dollars. And the medium was like four or five. So it was too close of a price. So one or two months after the small increased to four, two, they brought it down to 3,900 just so that the difference was more understandable between the small and the medium. And that was, and I made a video about this back in 2015. Go and look at my videos. I still have them on my channel. I said, it's a Chanel miracle. For the first time ever, a bag goes down in price. They allowed themselves to do this because 2015 was the year that they called of price harmonizing. Because if you remember correctly, in 2015, because Chanel wanted to stop Asia, mostly, from purchasing in Europe, because the bags in Europe cost way less than in Asia, what they did was, they in fact really did do this. In Europe, they pushed the prices really high, but in Asia, they put the prices low a little. So, the Asian market... In the on the Asian market, Chanel lowered the price. Thank you for subscribing. On the Asian market, Chanel lowered their prices in 2015 and upped their prices uh, in Europe to harmonize. So yes, you did experience a little price decrease in 2015, but then for Europe, a couple of months after that, they decreased further. Just the timeless classic double flap, small. From 4.2 or 4.150, it went down to 3.9. And that was a little miracle. But still, it went up from 3.2 to 4.2 and then back to 3.9. So it never went back to 3.9, uh, to 3.2 again. But from 4.2 to 3.9. And then it stayed at 3.9 for a year. And then they had the next price increase. And then, you know, it all went bananas from there. So, yes, it does happen, but uh, never on a vast scale. They've never officially made an announcement to say, oopsie, you know, like Apple did a couple of years ago when their iPhones, when they outpriced themselves out of the market and nobody wanted to buy their newest iPhone, which was over a thousand dollars. And then Apple was like, oops, all right, all right, I, I, let's reduce the price, right? So 
Chanel really believes that they can get away with this November 3rd price increase, when in reality, sure, who wants to show off that they can't afford it? They're still going to be the Oompa Loompa that the victim that really goes for it. Go for it. Be that victim. <laughs> who cares? I don't care. Give them all your money for all I care. But if people do wake up and Chanel gets a slap in their face, and the only way you can slap Chanel is by not buying their new priced bags. That's the only way to give them a slap. If you stop buying their stuff, then they might retract. But trust you me, they're not going to make an announcement and tell you, oh yeah, we made a mistake. We're going to kind of lower the price of the bag. No. If they outprice themselves out of the market, and they will realize it pretty soon if that happens, they will hush hush. This is how I think they would do it. They would reduce the price without announcing it because they would be too embarrassed. Uh, as they were too embarrassed to announce the decrease in price of the Timeless Classic Small back in 2015. I noticed it because I keep tracking the prices because that's my favorite size of the Timeless Classic. So, But there's that. Yes, this is totally bananas, Julie. <laughs> ah, so um, I do not think it's going to happen yet. I think they are firm believers of the fact that they don't care. 255, uh, Timeless Classic Maxi, $10,000 plus tax. Sure. I'm like, um, excuse you. The Maxi is already not selling that much. So it's a joke. The 255, which barely sells, and it's still really cheap on the secondhand market. Chanel doesn't care. They're maintaining the price of the 255 in the same level as the price of the Timeless Classic. Now, the 255 is my favorite Chanel bag, but I'm sad that because I fear that with this new price increase coming on November 3rd, they're going to kill the 255 because nobody is going to buy the 255 anymore. I, I don't think anybody, I don't think that the poor 255, which is the best bag Chanel has, nobody's going to want to buy it. And here again, Virginie Viar, I am looking at you, girl. I know you don't design the bags, but. <sighs> Carl brought the 255 back. In 2005, Carl made this whole story about the reissue, about him finding the folded bag in a box, wanting to bring it back in its glory, the most famous Chanel bag, yada, yada. It was the first bag she made when she, the first official bag she released after she came back from exile. Remember, Coco Chanel started redesigning and reopening her ateliers in 1954. So, her first big bag launch was 1955. One year after she opened her ateliers, she launched the 255 bag. So it's a very important bag. It's the first major bag she designed after her return to the fashion world. It's a major thing. The 255 has a very important symbology. So he brought it back 50 years after its inception in 2005. That's 50 years after the first release of the 255. And we had the whole reissue vibe and it was so beautiful to see and the 255 in all colors and shit. it was just amazing now virginie doesn't care for it or her design team or the vatheimers maybe just told her hey bitch stop it with the 255 it ain't selling that much so don't put too much effort into it let's just keep pumping out the shit that the people want to buy with a double c and so now i think they put that nail in the coffin of the 255 with this new price increase because it was already not selling well. Imagine now, after the second major price increase in one year, nobody's gonna buy the 255 anymore. So they're probably gonna keep producing it still in very small quantities just because, you know, it's the 255 bag. But if you look at the, they, they have one special 255 every season with embroidery and beading that costs you an arm and a leg. But they have 50 special editions of the Timeless Classic with embroidery, with the this, with the that, with the pilots, with the sequins, with the tweeds, with the velvets. You see what I mean? So I'm really sad. I'm really sad that their desperation to remain afloat, to maintain their image and all of that, they're sacrificing their best stuff. How long this game is going to last? Well... It's still going to last. I'm sorry to have to tell you this, but you will experience a day when uh, the maxi will be $20,000. <laughs> you will. 
and it's coming soon. So it's time to wake up people. And yes, one of the major tricks I had in the past, because I love the 255, I would hunt down the seasonal pieces that never go up in price. But now Chanel is catching up with that game as well because they're embarrassed. They're embarrassed that they're, you're, you're spending for maxi 10,000 and this thing is under 4,000. And they, they're like, oh no, well, no, okay, yeah, that's a problem. That's a problem if people notice that uh, it's embarrassing for us if people notice that a better produced bag costs less than a, th a third of the price that the uh, maxi costs. Yeah. So they snuck in before the November 3rd price increase. They snuck in this Chanel media, um, Chanel seasonal bags price increase and uh, very hush hush. So hush hush that even my sales associate didn't know about it. And other friends of mine who work for Chanel, who I'm in contact with across the globe. Because when I heard about this one costing more all of a sudden, you best believe I was in the boutique typing and writing to all the people I know from other Chanel boutiques worldwide, asking them, hey, is this just this boutique that's tricking me? I want confirmation from all of you. And everybody answered me telling me, oh my God, it did go up in price. When? Nobody knew when. <laughs> this is a crazy thing that even their sales associates don't know anymore at which speed and how and what it happens in terms of price increases. So, you're welcome. Alleged truth about the price increases at Chanel. Are we any wiser today than we were yesterday before we knew this? No, we're not. But we are angrier and I do hope that that anger wakes you the F up and makes you stop purchasing blindly. Be clever about what you buy and how you buy it. Just saying. Just say and I'm not the one like, oh, preaching in and that I'm buying a bag too. Yeah, but I'm buying a bag that costs almost one fourth the price of, of their new prices. And it's still a Chanel bag. You see what I mean? There's ways and ways of but they're catching up with that. That's why they're starting to up the prices of their seasonal bags, which they didn't do in the past. They're starting to do it now because they're embarrassed. Let me read a couple of your chats and let me scroll the end titles. Um, Sota says, Cause as they could be saying, Chanel knows it's dying, slow decay. Why not have some fun? They're not dying. They will outlive us all. Trust you me. This brand is like a cockroach. It, it, it will survive. It has enough funds to survive this and then some, but they are in trouble. They are struggling. They are struggling. Now, the choices they're making to help themselves out of the pickle are very sketchy choices, very tasteless choices, have nothing to do with elegance. And we remember, I, always, I never stress enough to repeat myself, Coco Chanel said it best, the opposite of luxury is not poverty. The opposite of luxury is vulgarity. What Chanel is doing here right now as a brand is vulgar. And Coco is probably rolling around in her grave so much since a couple of years that poor woman is on a roller coaster ride since years in that grave. She's been barfing every day because the roller coaster just never stops and she's just like stop it for a second you guys let me breathe a little it's been a roller coaster ride for me i've been rolling in my grave since you started this these shenanigans give it a rest but they're not giving it a rest and they don't care about her nor her legacy pixel says money is more important than things yeah Richard says, I think this is why the sales associate will not tell me the price for the bag I pre-ordered from spring summer 2022, because the price will probably go up before it comes out. Yes, Richard, that is a big reason. In fact, that was good that you bring this up. I was also talking about my sales associate about the fact that I said, oh my gosh, I got really lucky then when I pre-ordered my vest from the Chateau des Dames Métier d'A collection, because you did give me a price when I pre-ordered it six months before the collection hit the stores, and the price was the same when the collection did hit the stores. What would have happened if the, pr if the price changed? And she said, well, technically, depending on the country and the consumer laws in your country, but technically, if the brand writes you black on white, as she did to me from her 
uh, company telephone, she sent me a text message telling me how much the vest will cost. So that is legally binding. They're going to try to talk you out of it. Once, you know, the thing six months after the pre-order is set arrives and it's like $1,000 more. Tough luck. No, you can use this in some countries. You can use it against it. Say no. You have to honor your word. You told me I pre-ordered this under these conditions. So you have to sell it to me for that price. It's difficult. They're going to try to weasel their way out of it, but uh, you can push for it and get it for sure. So that was clever that they didn't tell you the price because now they can tell you whatever the hell they want to tell you once the bag arrives. Of course, they could also tell you because you did not prepay the bag because Chanel doesn't allow prepayment. Why they don't allow prepayment? Because if stuff goes up in price, they want to get more money from you, uh, but also other reasons. But um, technically, they could weasel themselves out of it and say, well, you didn't prepay it. You just pre-ordered it. You don't have to buy it. You're not legally obliged to buy it either. You can just leave it here. That's fine too. So if that happens, then you're the sucker. You were like, be, you know, you were looking forward to it for six months to get this piece that you pre-ordered six months ago. I'm, t I'm saying six months because it takes six months, you know, from the fashion show to the actual launch in the boutique, it's about a six month process. You were looking forward to it. And then all of a sudden they're like, yeah, if you really want the bag now, it's a thousand dollars more oopsie and you're like but i saved up for this or whatever and they're like well not our problem so yeah it's sketchy af to say the least now i was lucky because also my sales associate said well usually with the clothes they don't go up in price that often and usually it's easier to honor the price of blah 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 the worst thing that can happen with clothes she said is that we actually drop an article completely it gets canceled because not not enough were ordered or because the collections are now starting to become more and more reduced you see, we're, it's that same loop. We're back to the same problem and it never ends until it ends. And when does it end? When we decide to stop purchasing. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you like this video. If you have, please thumb it up. Subscribe to my channel. Until next time, never forget to never give up on love. Love you all. See you soon. Take care. Bye.